I mean, it was just a watershed moment for Netflix, really. I mean, getting into the live scripted entertainment, you know, I feel like this is sort of the house of cards, you know, industry-wise, if you think about the change, that was really the beginning of their launch into programming, you know, their own original programming. This seems like getting into the live space. I mean, they've dabbled in live, Melissa, but this is a, you know, a very big 10-year, $5 billion deal with WWE. This is transformative and doing it on the exact same day that they announced the largest quarterly net ads since the pandemic quarter and only the se- that literally the second largest net ad quarter in the history of the company, given how big and how old Netflix is, stunning that they can grow subs that quickly. Do you, how do you think their sports strategy or their live strategy will unfold? Do you think we'll see them going after, you know, rights to live sports or, or will they just pursue the sports adjacent, sort of not necessarily depending on it being live all the time, but things that can be rewatched over and over again? Look, I think they were very careful to use the phrase that you just recited, sports adjacent, right? Um, you know, l- live entertainment um, is not sports, right? I mean, WWE is scripted programming. Every episode, it's been on NBC and um, other the NBCU family of networks um, where SmackDown's going to reside um, after the transition from Raw, but it's scripted. Netflix loves scripted programming. This is just live scripted. Now, I wouldn't be naive enough to believe that there isn't a future in sports. They've been testing with things like tennis and golf, their own sort of created events. Do I think long, long term, meaning over the next 10 plus years, could I see Netflix getting into the sports arena in a bigger way? Sure. But I think they were very careful. This is not about sports. This is about getting into or expanding from scripted into live scripted. And and that's as far as they're going. Do I think we'll be talking about in five to 10 years moving into sports, like true live sports? I'm sure. But that is not what's happening. And I wouldn't be, I would be surprised to see them move too quickly into sports. I think for all walk run, they're on that process and on that, you know, continuation of growing into it. Hey, Rich, it's Tim. You teed up in your notes the impact of generative AI um, and whether it's on the content creation process. Frankly, for a company that continues to uh, grow their free cash flow model, think about this also, maybe phrase it in in your analyst chair and what this means in terms of uh, both income statement and how you view this company in a cycle where I I think there are going to be a lot of upgrades coming, obviously, off these numbers, but because of some of the, the dynamics around how they can be more profitable than ever. Well, look, the obvious area that seems to jump out at me is animation. Uh, They just had one of their, I think their most successful animated movie in history called Leo. They talked on the call, uh, answering one of our questions about there being a Leo sequels being kicked around now. Uh, I have to believe when you think about the storyboarding and, you know, you know how long it takes, Tim, to make animated movies. It's three to four years. It's a brutal process. If you can speed up that content creation process for animation um, and, and really do it more quickly. I think that's a place where generative AI could have a meaningfully positive cost impact and speed efficiency impact on the business. And so I think that's notable. How it reduces cost in the broader business, I mean, I don't, I don't expect um, storytellers to go away anytime soon. But I am curious that they didn't really, you know, talk to generative AI. But I think it'll be interesting how generative AI impacts them beyond animation. I think that's the obvious starting point. Rich, I got two questions for you. One, Netflix mentioned a gaming strategy a couple of years ago. Where do they stand on that? And two, what makes you think Tim would have any idea how long it takes to make an animated well, film? Tim is so right. working on I'm his car- animated. I am cartoon right here. Don't you I remember mean, that? I'm laying out storyboards. Right. Thank That's you, Rich. How you get the sound I appreciate under, you. Yeah, and, and I, I'm giving Tim kidding. credit for his um, <laughs> overall creative capabilities. But Thank you. in answer to your question on on gaming, look. Brandon Ross, my partner, lives and breathes video games. Like, he still continues to believe that, you know, they're probably going to need to make an acquisition at some point. You know, maybe not a major, like, thing like an EA acquisition. How about but do Spotify? they have to buy? Well, that's, that, that's well beyond gaming. I mean, look, Ted Sarandos, co CEO of Netflix, sits on the Spotify board. I'd be surprised. Music is so different. And music, you know, think about what Daniel X doing. He's trying to own all of audio. I think very similar to Netflix is trying to own all of video. And yes, all of video, ultimately, Melissa, is your question of sports. I don't think they're there yet. I think they have to grow and get bigger. And the advertising business has to be much bigger to justify sports. That is the piece that is growing 
rapidly. And there's a major event happening in the next few days that your viewers should be paying attention to. T-Mobile, everyone who's on the T-Mobile Netflix on us is going to convert to the ad plan. So there's going to be a huge surge in advertising subscribers. Netflix talked about they may not even be able to fill that demand immediately, mm. inventory, because it's going to take time. But that's going to be a very big tailwind for the Netflix ad business as you move through Q1.